This video is all about completing the square for quadratic expressions. So a quadratic expression like this one, x squared plus 4x plus 1, this is the normal form that we'd see a quadratic in. But when we're completing the square, what we're going to do is write it in a different form called completed square form. This is what we call completed square form. So what we've got is in a bracket, we've got an x plus a, and a is a number. That's all squared, and then we're adding another number on the end, which we're calling b. Now, completing the square is something that we do not just for the sake of it, but it has some nice applications, some good reasons for doing it. So one of those reasons is to help us to solve quadratic equations. So let's say, for example, this was equal to zero. That makes that now an equation. We could use completing the square to solve that and find the values of x, the solutions. Another thing we can do is we can use it to help us to draw graphs because completing the square helps us to find the maximum or the minimum point on a quadratic curve. So this is a graph of this expression, x squared plus 4x plus 1. And the minimum point is this point down here, the lowest point on the curve. If it was the other way up, then it would be the maximum point, be the point at the top. So it's the point where that curve changes direction. And we can find the coordinates of that point by completing the square as well. So that's another application of completing the square. In this video, we're just going to look at what completing the square means. And in a later video, we'll look at how to do it algebraically and how to then use that for solving equations and drawing some graphs. So we're going to think about drawing a diagram, making this visual. So what we've got in our expression, we've got an x squared. So we're going to represent that like this. We've got four x's. So that's one, two, three, four. And we've got a one on the end here. So we'll use a one. So that's x squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4x plus 1. Now, when we're completing the square, what we're trying to do is make that as close to a perfect square as possible. So if I rearrange these, I'm going to put two of these x's alongside the x squared. I'm going to put two of them underneath. So we just exchange those for some x's, the other orientation. So I've got two there, and then I'm going to put my one in here. Now, we're pretty close to a square here, but we've got a little bit missing. Now let's just think about what this square would be. So this dimension here is x squared square rooted to give me the side length. That's x. And then this length here must be one. So that's going to be 1, 2. So I can say that length is x plus 2. And it's the same thing down here. So this all the way down here, that's also going to be x plus 2. So if I had a complete square there, that would be x plus 2 all squared because it's x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. But actually, I don't have the whole square here. What I've got is a bit missing. Now, the bit that's missing here is three ones. If you imagine I had three extra ones in there, that would complete my square. So I had one, two, three more ones. That would complete my square. But I don't have those. I've just got this gap. So what I'm saying is that I'm actually three short of where I should be. And so that would make it three less than the complete square. 
And that is the same as this quadratic expression that we had to start with. Let me show you another example. So here we've got x squared again, plus another 4x. This time there we've got plus 5. So let's look at what that looks like. So we've got an x squared. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4 x's again. But this time we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ones. So we've got x squared plus 4x plus 5 is here. Now again, if I make this into a as close to a perfect square as I can, my 2x is there. I'm going to change my x's and put some x's down here. That's my x squared and my 4x's. And I've got my plus 5. So I can put 1, 2, 3, 4 and then I've got one extra left over. Now this time I've actually got a complete square. And this length again along here is going to be my x plus 2, exactly the same as it was last time. And then down here, again, I've got that length x plus 2. So I've got my x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. So I can write that as x plus 2 all squared x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. And this time I've actually got that complete square. But what I've got left over is an extra 1. So I have to add 1 on there. So when I had my x squared plus my 4x plus my 5, that gave me x plus 2 all squared plus an extra 1. And I got this expression. Now with both of those, this one here and this one here, I can think about them in this form. So for this example, I've got my x there. My a in this example is 2, so a equals 2. And b for this one equals 1. If I go back to the previous example, a here equals 2, that one. This time, b is actually a negative number b equals negative 3. So although I normally say I'm adding b, in this case I'm adding a negative because I've got take away 3 at the end. So in the next video we'll look at how we can algebraically complete the square to go from the normal quadratic expression form into the completed square form. And then in a further video after that we'll look at some applications of completing the square.